My name is Trevor Labovitz and I do tube and solid state amplifier repairs. I also do uh, modifications, demodifications, speaker installations, and really the sky's the limit. I work a lot with uh, tonal voicing, tonal shaping, and I kind of just work with the client to get uh, get the sound that he or she is passionate about. Uh, I just had a 1966 uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb come in. <clears throat> It just started having issues after about 46 years of service. So just a couple wires are broken. Um, There's a lot of dirt in the controls, and uh, yeah, just you know, general cleaning and stuff like that. Diagnostic process. First, you got to listen to the amplifier and kind of get a sense of what's going on, and um, you got to just listen to it and experience the issues that the user is experiencing as well. And then you go through it, you listen to it. You pop it on the bench, you remove the chassis, you kind of take a first glance. The first thing uh, they might teach you in any technical schools, do a visual, you know, put, prod around with a uh, non-conducting device. You know, you're just looking for those connections and stuff, and then, then you kind of start running the, uh, the more complicated diagnostics. Like uh, you look at the signal on the oscilloscope, you run a, a certain uh, signal in there. Um, you check all the tubes. You check any of the active components, such as transistors or tubes. You check power supply, you take readings, you look at a schematic. You kind of compare data off a schematic to the amplifier. Um, and you just make really well thought out repairs. I try, I usually use a couple different uh, guitars when, I, when I'm testing out an amplifier. Uh, generally, I like to use humbuckers because they're noise canceling and, they, and you, know, you can kind of eliminate any issues the amplifier might be causing. What we have going on here is a modern Fender amp that I essentially gutted and rebuilt. It had printed circuit boards um, in it that were manufactured by giant machines, putting components in boards and using a process called wave soldering, which is where everything's manufactured and processed and produced really quickly. Uh, the ending result is a tone, uh, is, a, is a pretty good tube tone, but not the most desirable. Uh, not to say that they sound bad, they can always sound better, and these are great platforms to kind of do rebuilds on. You hear the terms black face and the term silver face. This amplifier down here is a silver face amplifier. It's, you know, it's got a silver face to it. I do work on a lot of black face, and black face is kind of the, uh, the early Fender stuff that was you know, put together with a lot more care. You know, when, when you're voicing amplifiers, you, know, you use kind of loose terms like do you want a silver face sound, do you want a black face sound. Marshall sound, you know, do you want a Randall sound? Do you, what kind of what kind of voicing are you looking for? And in a lot of custom build work I do for people, um, we, we use we use these terms. Um, you know, right, what do you want? I ask them, what do you want? What's your goal? What what kind of sound are you looking for? Based on my past experience, you know, will increase or decrease gain. What's called gain in certain stages, which is uh, technically it's voltage amplification, and there it kind of equates to a hotter, or cooler sound, kind of depending on how much gain you have in there. It would be uh, considered changing capacitors. It's, a, it's not just changing capacitors, it's kind of a, the capacitors, the resistors, the tubes, everything has a play on itself. You gotta really know how to manipulate them all so they cooperate in just the right way to get just the right sound. I charge by the hour. It's kind of like, you know, any, any highly engineered device, a car, you know, an amplifier, um, a TV, oscilloscope, anything that might need calibration or repair, you know, it's crazy by the hour. Um, yeah, and I kind of only reserve rush rush jobs for people and uh, who need it more or less in 24 to 48 hours, you know. If people are rushing me to fix their amp for band practice, I would put the people who are rushing me to play a show ahead of them. And that's going to cost a little more because i got to drop everything clear off the bench and just focus on one thing. You never know if it's going to take one hour or eight hours. Um, I love what I do, and uh, my repairs, my work, I would say it speaks for itself.